So you like drawing with ballpoint pens. That's okay, they're quite nice to draw with. They're a legitimate art tool. But they do come with a major problem, much like alcohol markers as well. They are not light fast, which is why I haven't used them in a very long time. But then I found these things, Uniball Jetstream, which comes with the Uni Super Ink, which claims to be waterproof, fade proof, quick drying pigment ink. So to find out if any of these claims are true, what I've done is that I have collected a pretty good array of different brands of ballpoint pens. And I've drawn large thick lines with the ink that they have in them. And then I'm going to torture this ink to see how it compares to the Uniball Jetstream with the Uni Super Ink to see if it truly is super or if it's exactly the same as every other ballpoint pen ink and if any other ink out of any other ballpoint pen can compare to it and then maybe I'll find the best ballpoint pen for drawing with how exciting well it's now three weeks later since I started testing all these inks and I was rather brutal with them here's the control and we're going to take out each test strip one by one and have a look at how the inks have fared over time. It's taken me uh, three weeks to do these tests, basically because I wasn't quite sure on how to do the UV light test. I wanted it to be uh, subjected to some real intense UV light, so I started trying to make some kind of stupid arc lamp out of some pencil LEDs and a MDF box. That didn't um, that didn't go too well. So after all of that mucking around, I just ended up leaving one of these test strips out in the sunlight for three weeks. Actually, I left two test strips out. I left one under a veranda, and I left another one on the inside of a window. Now first we'll have a look at the dry heat test strip, which was interesting, but not entirely accurate, uh, mostly because I couldn't get an even heat distribution in the fry pan I had put it in. It's kind of a dumb test, but we'll leave it in there anyway. I also tested it in cold water. So I just basically left this strip of paper here in water for like a couple of hours and uh, I found it interesting that the uniball this one here was the only one that actually did any bleeding at all that was quite strange then I did a very interesting test something that inks will never ever be exposed to well I would hope hot boiling water now I can't say that any ink was particularly great in hot boiling water. Even the so-called Uni Super Ink didn't go too well. You can see the difference here. But out of all of them, the worst would have been the Bic Crystal. This here was originally a black ink. What I found most bizarre was that the ink that survived the best in the hot boiling water survived the worst in the cold water. No idea what happened there. Now I'm going to show you a test which actually has some basis in reality. The UV light tests. So this one here, which does have some burn marks, this one here was left under a veranda for three weeks and it got a pretty good amount of sun coming from under the veranda over that period of time. The Bic Crystal Black, you can see some fading. The Stadler Stick 430F is basically completely gone. 
the big classic fine almost gone this old uni ball here though is quite still quite strong the big ecolutions there's a bit of fading there the blue paper mate ink joy didn't fare too well but the black paper mate ink joy actually turned out pretty well and here's a test strip I left on the other side of a window and we see much the same story I'm actually surprised how well this paper mate ink joy in black fares under UV light it isn't um, marketed to be UV light resistant or fade proof in any way but actually coped quite well the pen I reckon that came out on top out of all of them in every single test would have to be the only pen that has actually been marketed to be fade proof and water resistant and that is the Uniball Jetstream 101 that contains the Uni Super ink so it seems that they're not lying. Their ink actually is pretty durable. But I've also found another one, which is also very durable. The worst out of all of them would have to be anything made by Bic. Completely terrible. The Bic Ecolutions, you can see was actually survived reasonably well nowhere near as good as the paper mate though the big classic in blue is almost completely gone so there you have it uni speaks truth so basically the whole point of this quest was to find the perfect ballpoint pen for drawing so I suppose I better do some. So I've selected the three winners and I've divided a piece of paper into three parts just with lines of a mechanical pencil and I'm going to draw a single picture with those three different pens in their own little areas. So you can see some contrast between the different inks. So the pens I selected which I think performed the best in sunlight were the the Papermate Ink Joy 300 RT, the Uniball Jetstream 101, and the that blue Uniball pen of mystery, which I it doesn't have any actual branding on it besides Uniball, but if I go to the Officeworks website, I managed to find a pack of those very pens selling for $28.51 for 12 of them, which is not too bad, $2.38 per pen. In fact, most of the pens I have selected cost about $2 or under. The UniJet Stream 101, I basically bought them for a dollar each because I bought them in a pack of 10. And you can easily buy a Papermate Inkjoy 300RT in a pack of four for $4.25. All of these prices are in Australian, by the way, in case you're wondering. So the first pen I started drawing with was the Uni Jetstream 101. So the first thing I noticed when drawing with the Uni Jetstream 101 was that the ballpoint is incredibly smooth, very smooth action. In fact, I'll call it slippery it basically has no friction whatsoever so it's great for uh, really quick sketching and the like but I've come to the conclusion that the ink in it has a very low viscosity which makes it a little bit more difficult to get those smooth gradient shading techniques that you sometimes see people using with ballpoint pens it does take a slight amount of pressure to activate a line out of it and if you go slightly below that pressure it basically does almost nothing at all so making a faint line out of it is a bit more difficult I mean it's doable 
but you may be tempted to try more of a cross-hatching technique to get shading out of it. Now a word about writing with the thing. I find its incredibly smooth and slippery nature not to be particularly nice for writing. Maybe it's just a personal taste of mine. But I feel that I have no control over the pen because I have no friction between the pen and the paper. But that is just a personal taste really. I've met people who prefer it that way. Now when it comes to the feel of the pen in the hand, it's quite nice. The entire pen is basically made out of a hard plastic and it has a slight rubberized finish painted over the entirety of the pen, except for two tiny clear plastic strips down each side, which are slightly transparent. So if you hold it up to the light, you can see how much ink you've used. You know, can I think of anything else to say about this pen? Mm, no, no, not really. Okay, moving on to the Papermate Inkjoy 300RT. Now the first thing I noticed when I was drawing with this pen was that the viscosity of the ink is a lot higher than of the Uniball Jetstream. Well, I believe so anyway. Just by the sensation of how it draws and writes. It can draw quite a faint line as well, just with a slight amount of pressure. So it's a lot better for those smooth gradient kind of shading techniques that those ballpoint pen artists use, which you can probably tell by now I'm not exactly one of them. But I did feel that when I was shading with this pen, that it wasn't the pen that was holding me back from making nice shading. It was my own impatience, basically, to get the job done which is not how you're meant to make art really, but anyway, moving on. Due to the uh, higher viscosity of the ink in the pen, there is a, a lot more friction between the nib of the pen and the paper, enabling me just a bit more control while drawing and writing. Of course, that means it's not as nice to use for quick, effortless sketches, but it's more, it's better for accuracy, basically. And the pen feels quite good in the hand as well. It has a nice rubberized grip at one end, which is quite soft. And that's all I really have to say about the Papermate Inkjoy. Now let's move on to the final pen. That Uniball Blue Pen, which I now must disqualify from this entire test because I have just discovered that, and it should have been obvious to me earlier, it is not a ballpoint pen. It is in fact a rollerball. You might be asking, well, what's the difference? That sounds like a different name for the same thing. Well, a ballpoint pen contains an oil-based ink, and a rollerball contains a water-based ink. And the water-based inks in rollerball pens always flow a lot more easily because they have a much lower viscosity. So when I was using this Uni Rollerball, um, it basically felt like I was drawing with a fountain pen, which I must say is rather nice because I do like fountain pens. And I like writing with fountain pens, but this is meant to be the hunt for a great ballpoint pen. And this rollerball pen doesn't behave like a ballpoint pen at all. So um, shading with it is basically impossible. I had to completely go to the cross-hatching method. But out of all three of them, it's definitely the best pen for line art and inking and that kind of thing. Also, if I look at the item description for this uh, pen that's being sold at Officeworks, it says that it also contains the Uni Super Ink. So that's another plus. So that's probably also why it performs so well. But it makes other claims such as these Uniball Fine Point Rollerball pens contain Uni Super Ink, which I agree with, which is permanent, waterproof and fade proof. 
I don't entirely agree with the waterproof statement. If you can think back to the near the beginning of the video where I showed the uh, ink from that particular pen dissolving in the water, the ink that was dry, mind you. Although to be fair, I did put a pretty thick coating of ink on the surface of the paper. So that might have something to do with it. But they are definitely fade proof. In fact, I think it's probably the most fade proof pen out of the whole bunch. Well, it's neck and neck with the Uniball Jetstream anyway. Now, I think the reason why the ink dissolved in water is that because it is actually a water-based ink. It probably is a pigmented ink, but the binders in it and everything probably are water-soluble. Whereas the Uniball Jetstream, which is a ballpoint pen, would contain an oil-based ink, which is not water-soluble. Which is why every other ballpoint pen behaves so well underwater. Unless it was boiling, of course. Well, that's a different story. So which one is the best ballpoint pen for drawing? Well, depends what you want. Do you want a good inking pen? Because if you do, I wouldn't use a ballpoint pen at all. I would use the rollerball. Or maybe a fountain pen. Or something else. Do you want a pen which is incredibly fade-proof and still behaves much like a ballpoint pen? Well, then I would go for the Uniball Jetstream. Or do you want something that behaves exactly like every other ballpoint pen, but still has a good measure of fade resistance? Then I would go for the Papermate Inkjoy 300RT in black. Remember to get the black one. I don't know about the other colours. The blue one didn't go too well. So in conclusion, if you're getting married to someone who happens to know something about stationery, and you see them signing that marriage certificate with a blue big crystal, I would start to be very concerned. <laughs>